Alrighty, are you interested in creating a Udemy course for yourself? You're not sure where to start. So I'm going to show you from my profile. My name is Adrian. So when you start with Udemy, you'll first open an account for yourself on the Udemy platform. Alright, and so once you open the account, you also have the option of becoming an instructor. So you're first going to go onto the Udemy site. What is it? www.udemy.com or you can just put in Udemy and it comes up. And just a couple of things here on the main board. So you go to my learning. Those are the things that you are studying at the moment. Um, you can have two different accounts or you can have one. You know, um, so I used to have, I have the one, which is this one that I'm creating my courses on. And then there's the second one that I do all my learning on. But I've come to realize that because I'm always creating, I kind of end up not going to the one where I'm training. So for me, it makes sense to keep them together, but you can keep them separate. They link to an email address and any communication that you need to get then goes subsequently to that email address. Okay. So my learning, that is the things that you are learning, as I said. As you can see, I'm into stretching, exercises, general stretching. It's actually a breathwork course. It's absolutely amazing. And then instructor is where you're going to go if you are creating a course. Okay, but before we go over there, um, this is just, it's like a normal thing where you can just like courses or can see what you liked or that sort of thing, basically. Um, there's a card over there, which you normally get. It, it operates, the site operates, 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 sorry, not saving anything operates very similarly to how online shopping cart works okay so those are the things that i've shown interest in i haven't purchased them yet those are some messages that i've received over there that is communication from the courses that i signed up for so maybe it's like a welcome message that says welcome adrian um you can also send people a message when they're done with the course or you know there's some sort of communication happening there probably from the course creator and then also from udemy themselves there with my little profile picture a little bit outdated and just to let you know, I'm not going to go there now, but when you click on your profile picture, it sort of opens for you. And then you get the options here of putting all sorts of things in there. Maybe a link to your website and to your social pages. You can do a little bit of a write-up. So that's very, very beneficial. The one thing to remember with creating a Udemy course, which I think is just the one thing that's important, is they've got only, you get very much free reign in here. You can carpe diem for your heart's content. But the one thing that you want to remember, and this is the one legal thing that you have to sign with them, is because Udemy offers their students lifetime access to courses. So the moment your course goes live and you have one sign up, you can't cancel that course. All right. So that's the one thing that you need to know from the start. You need to complete your course, submit it for submission, and then it goes live. You can do paid courses as well as free courses. Free courses, I think, are really, really great because um, it brings food traffic onto your site. I'll show you. I've got one free course, which has been very, very beneficial. And also, when somebody buys something, so I'm just going to click on your own instructor. So it takes you more to sort of like the training part of the platform. And then it opens up on the courses that you have. So these are your live courses, the courses that you are working on, all of those sort of things. So it's very much like the back end of like a, like a website almost in a way. Okay. Um, so I am currently working on a Tibetan and a Sui Reiki course. So depending on obviously on when you see this, that might already be live actually. Then I've got a live course, which is a spiritual awakening starter kit course. I'm going to show you all those extra things just now. Um, and these are some other courses that I've started to work on as well. Art of Forgiveness, Candle Magic. I do a lot of sort of like esoteric work, a lot of wellness work, a lot of personal development. Chakra Balancing and Aura, chakra balancing and aura Cleansing, Inner Child Healing for Abundance. And then here's one of the courses that I have live. Osho Zen Tarot Reading Course. It's a step-by-step -step course. Um, Candle Magic is something that I'm working on, how to start a tarot reading online business. And then I've got this one for free over there, how to read oracle cards for beginners. Um, so I'm not going to go into what oracle cards and tarot cards and those things usually are. But if any of you are interested in, in learning about that, I do have a course available on that. All right. And then, yeah, I'm working on a psychic development course. And then also, yeah, this was my very first one, detailed tarot reading course. Okay. So. Your another thing to remember, another thing to know is that when people sign up with Udemy, they get the opportunity to do a full refund within the first 30 days of purchasing the course. 
I've done refunds on things before that I've purchased. It's literally no questions asked. So from the time somebody buys your course, it's a 30 days until the money is sort of like yours. And then you get paid on the 7th of every month. Unless that seven falls like on a public holiday or like a weekend and then you normally pay it before that. I'm going to show you that a little bit now. So just to give you an idea, just going over the basics for you quickly. So finish your course. If you basically click on that, that's something that you basically what you edit it, you manage it, you do your thing. So I'm going to show you that just because I'm working on it at the moment. I'm going to show you in a bit how to start a new one. But you get all different options here on the side. So... Um, so remember, you get, let's just move this up a little bit, just in case messages or something comes through. So you can also record on many different devices. My first course, I recorded on my iPhone, I did two on laptops, and now I'm doing this one on, or, or the last one that I actually did on my iPad. So you can do it on a number of different devices, or you can do it across a couple of different devices because you can obviously log into it. So... This is sort of like the, the general dashboard, as I said, and then you also have a dashboard per course. So because the course is not done, it says finish your course, but if I click on a course that's already live, I keep on forgetting to switch this thing on. If you keep on going on a course that's live, it's either going to say edit or manage the course, which is pretty much the same thing. All right. So let me just show you very quickly, just going back to the one that I'm working on at the moment. So you click on this one. And then when you when you start it, okay, I have to press that. So when you start it, you're gonna get all different sort of options of things that you can do. So intended learners, course structure, set up and test video is literally just you taking a video and sending it to the people at Udemy to say to you yeah, your name. All right. Um, they don't have you know they're very sort of like. Um, free reign in what they allow as long as it's of good quality and doesn't have like horrible background noise and stuff like that. I think the biggest step that I can give you when it comes to creating a course, I remember especially when I did my first one, the detail step-by-step -step tarot reading course, you know, I tried to do it so proper the way that other people do it. But then when I said, you know, this is who I am, I'm creating for those that are interested in my product. And, you know, if I'm not for you, then I'm not for you. And I normally communicate it very clearly in the beginning of the course. And this is also where these things are coming up. So then you know I'm the guy for you. I'm not the guy for you. Another tip that I like to give people is I would say that, you know, if you, um, well, you can do it one of two ways. I am not a big fan of creating very big detailed sort of training manuals. So what I will do is I'll say to you right from the very start. So I'm not a big fan of training manuals, but I'm going to give you all the information. I'm going to encourage you to keep some notes. Um, but I tell you, I'll tell you that in the very beginning, so you know. So if you're one of those people that says, well, I need to have a training manual, then maybe I'm not the person for you. You know, so you can sort of make that distinction very early in the course as well. Because what happens is, if any of you ever take, took one of these Udemy courses, very early in the course, you are actually asked if you want to rate the course or rate the trainer. So if at this point, this person's not very interested with your accent or your background or your whatever, they may say, no, this really sucks. This is not what I wanted. But if you tell them in the beginning, then they actually get the opportunity to decide. Something that's also really, really great is that you can decide if you do a paid course, you can decide how many of your first lessons you actually decide to make free. So people can get a feel for what it is that you do. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. <coughs> they can hear what you sound like, um, you know, if you gel with each other. I normally like to have a meditation included in my coaching, so maybe I end off on that. You know, some sort of highlight. Um, but I like to create my highlights in a sense that gives people the idea whether I am the person for you or not. But I don't, you know, in, in marketing, you get something called pain and pressure points, which is where you use someone's, well, there's many ways that you can play this. It's not necessarily negative, but you use people's almost like struggle areas against them. And I am totally, totally opposed to living life that way. Okay. So, um, so what is the goal behind me having a Udemy course? So I've had a YouTube channel for a while. It's under my name, Adrian Nelson, or you can find anything of mine under hashtag AHN Great Life. So that's Apple Hotel November Great Life. 
Oh, so hashtag Asian Great Life. Udemy is also great for pushing your hashtags. Hashtags, you want to think of hashtags as little bits of pieces that keeps everything together. So it's all your little dots that are connecting. Okay? So in that, it can be very, very helpful. Also remember that it's beneficial for you, especially if you have other social media handles. Um, because remember, in, in, in Google, everything is connected. And if you have... Uh, if you have Apple devices, even better, because then you also connect it via iTunes. But it's not, um, it, it's not like a, like a requirement, for example, because everything connects through Google. So, for example, I've got an iPad, but I've got an Android phone, and through Google, they connect perfectly. So, you know, as 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 much as I'm an I Apple fan, I won't deny it. You can you can perfectly go both ways. All right, and also Udemy is very compatible with both, fully compatible with both. All right, so. These things that you write over your intended learners, course structure and stuff like that, when somebody looks through your course, they see this as, you know, so Google, oh, oh, what did I do there now? Okay, I'm not going to save that, so that's fine. But, um, you know, so um, Udemy is going to gonna draw people in that sort of look at things like that, maybe search for it on Google, search for it on YouTube. So what you write over here is quite important. The way that Google reads... Google reads from the left to the right. And every new paragraph, or in this case, every new box, is seen as a new paragraph. So it starts, the beginning is stronger, and then it weakens as it goes down the line. Which means I might actually need to change this a little bit for stronger sort of keywords, SEO. If you don't know what keywords are, if you don't know what SEO is, if you don't know what hashtags are, if you don't know the benefits of tagging, I'm going to very strongly recommend that you go and start looking those things up. All right. Um, even in the let's just go back here before I forget to before I forget to um, you know to not save that. All right. So you fill in all those things. Those help people come to you. It helps them to to give them an idea of whether they want to be for you or not. And then so let's just go into this one, which is the last course that I created for myself. So you know you can change these things all the time as you want to. Um, let's look at the course landing page. So a little bit differently here, but when you look at it, obviously live, it looks, why well, is this thing making long lines? So you get the opportunity to do a little write-up over here. So you see, new line, new line, you line, okay? You will learn about, um, because sometimes people want to do that sort of things, you know? Um, past lives, for example, because I'm also a regression hypnosis practitioner. So it's this write-up is really, really important because... What is happening over here? You see funny things? Um, so let's bring up the keyboard. <laughs> At some point, I actually, this one time, I changed my keyboard to, I think it's Chinese, if I'm correct. And I didn't actually know how to change it back. It was very, very funny. Um, with captions, you can load captions. So obviously, you can do your course in different languages. And you can choose which language it is that you want to have. With captions itself, what you can do is you can you can either load in captions or you get everything worded, or you can able or disable it from the beginning. So if you enable it, when your course goes live and you have 20 signups, then your captions they automatically happen. You know that little writing that happens on the on the bottom of the page, which is really really cool. And you can also you normally get an email to let you know that your captions have now gone live. Um, and then also, you know, then you can actually go through them as well, just to make sure, you know, is everything spelled correctly, is nothing misspelled. I must be honest, I don't really do that that much, all right? So what the way that I do it, now you can obviously do things differently, but, you know, the way that I like to do it, and I pretty much do anything, anything that I basically do, I do pretty much the same way. I will first conceptualize it in my head. So what is the story that I want to tell? And then so I create all these, you, you can create all these different sort of, um, let's almost call them like paragraphs and sub-paragraphs, all right? So basic understandings, and then I've got all little things over there. Um, go through all of those things, need to know, journey to a more fulfilling life. Because remember, people get to see this. I will also recommend that when you do this little writing over here and this naming of courses over here, I'm going to recommend that you don't sort of make them too large because only a little bit of it fits into what people see or otherwise it goes into blank, you know, and words can really attract people. So once I've got all of this ready and I'm happy with all of that, then I will start recording my courses. And when I record them, I just do everything in one go. 
And I want to let you know that, you know, I make the sound very simple, but it is a bit challenging in the beginning. Um, the first course that I created, which was my step-by-step -step digital tarot reading course, um, I think that course is about 11 hours, if I remember correctly. I can't even remember. But it took me like six, seven months to actually record this course. Whereas the last one, this one, um, that one took me like four or five days. So you get better as you go along. All right. Um, so let's click in this courses. This is one of mine that is doing the best at the moment. Um, let's go to the curriculum. So I just want to show you the way that I do it. And also remember that when you stand in front of a class or even if let's say, and, and this is something that was quite a challenge for me because I can sort of speak and I go all over the place. But you know, the thing to remember is that people's attention spans is usually short. When people do online coaching, they may be run through this and to that and they're busy with this and they're busy with that. So um, they don't always have a lot of time. So I try to keep my, my, my a, lot of, a lot of lectures, but I keep them short. You know, so you can quickly check them out in your coffee break, in your loo break, when you walk from here to there, when you make a couple of photocopies, you know, when you just wait for your car, um, in your lunch break. So it's nice to keep them nice and small because also remember, people are still looking at you on a screen. So you want to make it very interactive. So that one was 9 hours and 39 minutes long, which took me quite a while, whereas the other one took me faster. Okay, I think the reason why Tarot just does better is because... People sort of, you know, when, when people think of me, they often kind of think of me as a tarot reader. You know, I do um, a lot of things on my Facebook page and Instagram and I teach tarot and I, you know, I've got a YouTube channel and I've, you know, as I said, I just finished creating a tarot deck. I'm busy with a new one. I don't think I said that, but anyway, now I said that. Um, so people associate me with tarot. So the other thing to remember is that you want to also promote your course. The, the better you promote it, the better you do. All right. So I would just in my weekly tarot readings, which isn't always weekly in any case, I will say, you know, um, if you're interested in learning card reading, you might want to check out the link um, in the description for my step by step tarot reading course. I also have a free Oracle card reading course. So you'll obviously see that my okay, let me just click on that. You will obviously. See, OK, let's just go out of there as well. You obviously see that my Oracle course is probably doing better than anything else. It's 142 enrollments this month. And this is actually not bad because I've been a little bit under the weather this month. I'm a Cancerian. Every now and then I get a mood where I just feel like, you know, wrapping myself up and eating a lot of food and meditating and leaving the world alone. So this was one of those months. Um, so it wasn't all that great anyway. But what I wanted to show you is that there's still a lot of traffic over there, you know, which is really, really great. Um, let's click on this one so you can see your performance of your course as well. I know I'm jumping very much over the place and I do apologize for that. But those are my total earnings so far. Those are my total enrollment so far. Um, this is for this course. Um, so also every night you get an email that says to check out your stats, but you can see how many students you have. So I've got something like, <coughs> sorry, like, 4,400 4, and something students at the moment, 1,350 for this particular course, 76 this month. So you can see how you do. There's a graph over there. You can see who your students are. So whatever name it is that they signed up with. So you can see who your students are, how they are doing, where in the world it is working. So you get a general idea for who's working for you. All right. Um, you get reviews, which I used to actually reply to all of these, but it's just become a little much. I'm quite proud of myself. I've actually been maintaining highest rated tarot course on um, Udemy for a couple of months now. And I think there's, a, there's, there's over a thousand tarot courses on Udemy. Um, so people get these tick boxes, valuable information. So this is what I was speaking about. This normally comes about quite early in the course, even if you have a free offer. So you want to be very transparent with people from the beginning and you can respond to them as well. You can write a nice little message there. You know, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, you can see course engagement. You can see this person one by one. So with your student list, what are we dismissing here? Something. Um, 
So you can do it one by one, or you can go to student list, you can see which months are you doing good, which month are you not doing so good, so you can know, you know, maybe, it is also really great because which of your marketing is working and which not. You can see people can put bookmarks in their course, so with Udemy, basically, you can go from this device to that device, which makes it really cool, because I can study something or create something on my phone, on my iPad, on my laptop, you know, on my desktop, and it can all have the same flow, basically. You just want to really match or, or watch sort of like background noise. It's very annoying when you have a video that's all nice and soft and the one thing and then the next thing happens and there's like drills happening at the back. But again, be transparent with people. You know, I've had this one course where I said, I'm very sorry, there's background noise. Everybody was quite cool with that, you know. Um, course engagement. So, you know, where are people stopping in your course? How long are they taking to go on? How many people download their certificate? Um, Udemy just give it, does give a generic certificate. You can choose to not have a generic certificate. People like a piece of paper. It is what it is. So um, I would also give people a certificate of completion. So for example, I like to be very detailed with my stuff. So for like a tarot course, I'll give you a certificate of completion. You know, yes, you've done this online how many ever hours. But if it's something like spiritual development, I will still have a certificate of completion because people just like that. All right. Um, you do have the option of either saying to people, you don't have to include certificates, but you do have the option of saying to people that they can contact you for certificates, but it becomes such a big thing. Or, you know, you can just say, listen, we're dealing with honesty here. You give them a certificate and they print it out themselves. That's what I do. All right. Then... What is it that I wanted to show you? Okay, so there's course communication. So featured questions is basically if somebody signs up for your course or they finish with it, you can send them a message, you know. So hi, person XYZ, welcome to the course, boom, boom, boom. It's, it's quite a nice welcome email to get, all right? Or well, thank you so much for completing the course. It really means a lot to me. You know, check out this, this, and that, you know, if you want to. So that's quite nice. Messages are messages that the students are sending to you. Um, assignments. Assignments is something that you can include in your in your courses if you want. Then it's almost like you know, like you do those online courses sometimes, and you have to do this or you have to do that, and that sort of thing. This is those type of things before you can move on to the next level. I think that's more for like IT stuff and you know, like like things that you really need to have a grasp of. Whereas obviously I don't teach those things, but maybe you do. You know, announcements. Announcements is really really cool. You can send like for a month. Um, yeah, I send happy seasons greetings. Um, when was that? For December the 23rd, 2022. But you can send messages to people. Hey, I've got a new course. Hey, my course has gone on special. The thing to remember with Udemy courses is that they typically go on special about two times a month on a nice special. Most people know that. So even if your course is very highly rated, know that you're probably going to get your most sales during that period of time. So again, what is your purpose for having this course? All right. I would say that if you want to make money from Udemy, which you can, um, very nice passive income, then you maybe want to create a lot of courses. Because if you have something that's really, really expensive and above the rate of someone else, even if your product is maybe very unique, people might be a little bit hesitant to go with you. You know, obviously depending on your reputation and all of those type of things. Um, but for me, the thing is, you know, why must I pay way more money when a different course sort of gives me the same thing? You know, and people obviously think that way as well. So you want to put yourself in the shoes of the people that are taking your course. Um, but if you create a couple of them, so, for example, I started the Reiki course. Now, I'm a Reiki Grandmaster. So, those are individual courses, you know. So, I've already got a couple. But I create courses based on what people are asking me to create, you know. So, maybe I'll even do one for how to do an online business because a lot of people have been asking me that. I'd like to get into the online flow. How do I do that, you know? Um, so, with Reiki, for example, there's Reiki Level 1, Reiki Level 2, Advanced Reiki, Reiki Masters. Um, I've got, uh, you know, I'm a, not Kundalini, sorry. Um, I am a... Now I forgot the word, but anyway, so um, Karuna Ki Reiki, Animal Reiki, um, there's another one I can't remember now, and then I also have Grandmasters, so those are a couple of courses that I can do. So think more long term. I think the thing on Udemy is if you think greed, it's not going to work for you, all right? You can also do promotional emails where you can put your own things on promotion, or you can let people know that the thing that is on promotion now, you know, is, is on promotion. Um, that's a very good idea. Performance, again, very much the same thing, really. The thing that I want to show you here is your revenue report. 
So you can see which month you did well, which month you didn't do so well. So that's the money that I've got from um, Udemy so far. Um, they're showing me the periods there, the graphs. Your money becomes available on the 7th of every month. Um, sometimes it's the 8th, you know, sometimes it's earlier. So you get to see um, this is the time period, the tax that was taken off. I'm a South African, so this is the tax that is staying in the US. This is my net earnings. When am I getting it? So today's date is April the 24th. So I got that for my last payout. And when I get paid next, I'm getting $351.80, which may increase. Um, <coughs> sorry. A little bit. Remember, they said that today's accumulation time of money. Um, but what we want to go to here is the courses. So when you create your course, you're going to click on new course. Okay. And I'm just going to do a dummy here for you over now, over here now. So you get here um, a practice test or you can click course. When you do practice test, it's more to sort of just get used to it. You know, like, so I want to see how this works. Let's see how this works. And then you can get some feedback. All right. Or in my case, I will click course and then I'll click continues because I want to create a course. And then you're going to put in the name of your course over here. I'm not going to go too deeply into this. Now. I'm just going to call it guy. Um, and then you go continue. What category does it fall in? You don't have to worry too much about this because when you submit your final course for revision, they will change that if it needs to be changed. And so it falls in a better category for people that normally search for your sort of things, where they normally search. But you can change it yourself as well. This is just really to give you an idea. There's somebody saying thank you very much. It completely resonates with you. I'm very happy. That's from my YouTube channel. I haven't decided yet. It's not really so important what you put over here. This is just for yourself, really. Um, and then you get to this whole thing intended learners buddy, buddy, bah, and then you set up that whole thing over there so I'm going to go out of this and I'm going to show you one that I'm currently working on come now so <coughs> sorry if you're going to give people a training manual I would say give it in the beginning and let them also know that that is what you are doing instead of giving people little chops and changes because remember everybody doesn't have a printer everybody doesn't feel like, like printing all the time maybe you need to fire the thing up every single time so be very transparent from the beginning in how you're going to do things so if someone doesn't resonate with you they can walk away and they can do so fast okay um also the other thing is you don't have to show your face when you do things you know, I think people do connect better with a face, but it's not compulsory to show your face. All right. So um, these are all these different options over here. Film and edit is just really, um, you know, it's like a community that you can join. They give you all sorts of tips and tricks over here, which is, again, very, very nice. You know, you can um, create a test here. If you really want to know, you can send it. Um, you know how to do things there's all those editing things I don't really use those things but you can have you know things flying across the screen and stuff like that very very nice very very helpful um, I would say it depends but what I'm gonna say and what I feel is very very important is that yes you can have things flying across the screen and stuff like that but let it not get too distracting and also remember that people are here to learn. So it's good to impress them, but don't impress them so much that you skimp on the value of what you offer them, all right? So when you go to curriculum, so here you have, as I said, all my stuff is, all right? <laughs> stuff is, is a South African word, but it's all my things. So, yeah, all my lessons are, um, so I haven't uploaded anything here yet, all right? So when you wanna upload something, you press on content, and you can put in video, video and slide, mashup, those are all the flying things, or an article. So an article will be a training manual. Um, sometimes I include a graph or something in my things to explain things to people, you know. Um, so you click on video. And then when you click on video, you select a file. So you can either, um, you know, you can either have choose a file, which is everything kind of put together already. I'm not that IT sort of savvy so I, I don't always I always take the easy option but you can click on take video which then enables whichever camera you are using to start taking a video of whatever it is that you are doing and then you upload it like that I will go to photo library so everything will be pre-recorded on my device and I just upload it over there and it processes so pretty straightforward once you do it 
Um, a tip that I will give you is you can upload multiple lessons at the same time but if you upload too many I found that it slows down your device and sometimes almost like when you upload things onto YouTube by the time you want to um, you know, because it uploads and then it processes. So if you upload too many at the same time, one, it makes it slow. Two, sometimes it says that, you know, that the upload wasn't successful. Something else that I found, though, is that instead of just going and re-uploading it new, um, I would actually sometimes just give it a moment and something that says that it wasn't successful then happens to be successful, okay? If you know how to name your files, then I will say definitely name them. Because if you, for example, open this and now you want to start uploading lessons and let's say you, you, um, you know, you, you sort of like recorded them in sequence, that's all fine and well, but it does get very confusing because now you've got all these five to seven minute lessons and when you want to start uploading them, you go like, oh my goodness, where do I choose from? So what I would do is, I would normally write down the names of these lessons. Welcome, beautiful soul. Do you have a spiritual? Did you have a spiritual awakening? Your entire life will change. So I will write. I'm very old school. Okay. So I will write it down on a piece of paper, and then once I've recorded the lesson, I will then write the time of that lesson next to the name. So when I then go and I want to upload a video, I know how long that lesson is. All right. Um, and, and that just really helps you to not get confused. But you can also change things around. I don't want to do it here now because this is a live course. But I'm going to show you on the one that I'm busy creating. You can also move lessons around, even when the course is live. All right. Um, so you also want to be very mindful of what you do on your course once it's live. Because remember, somebody might be busy studying the course that you're doing at the moment and you can sort of like jamble things up for them but you can sort of move them i know this is normally easier done with a mouse but oh, okay it's not going there now but you can sort of like shift them around or you can just go and create a new lesson okay i should have shown you how to do that so let's go out of here and let's get out of here i know i'm very jambled all over the place i didn't really pre-plan this i just sort of did it because a couple of people were asking me and I don't have time to do a full course together. So I just want to share some things with you of what you can do. So when you go on curriculum and you click things for you over there so you get all your different options. What is it that I actually even wanted to say now? You see how all over the place I am. All right, anyway, so let me show you this quickly. So content is a video you upload. Description is a little bit of writing that's underneath the video. It doesn't always come out clearly. But if you understand how to write for SEO or how to be discovered by Google and you want to look that up, that description can really help you because somebody looks for something on YouTube, for example, or on Google, and then your thing pops up as a suggestion. And resources is the, the stuff that you'll put in. Okay, so you like your training manual and all of those sort of things. Oh yeah, so this is what I wanted to show you. So when you start off, let's imagine you're just starting off. So this is... This is now this that you're putting over there. So you put a title over there. You add that section. You put a little something over there, which is like a little selling line. And then you can sort of like, you know, curriculum items. So you start adding things. You start adding lectures, coding exercises, assignments, courses. You can put all of those things in over there. That's obviously something that I don't have in my courses, but you can do it in yours if that resonates with what you do. All right. So, I think I just want to show you a couple of final things in this course. So, obviously, so here you are. You're getting your video. You're uploading your videos. And when you're done with everything, your course goes live. Remember, when you start your course, you're going to get the option of doing a paid course or doing a free course. Free courses at this particular point in time can't be longer than two hours. There's no limit on what you can do. Try to not, um, try to not compare yourself to other people. Try to not to reinvent the wheel. All right? Um, you do the best that you can, the right people will come to you. A lot of people have a lot of questions about pricing. Um, pricing, um, my courses are sort of all in the same rate. They probably can be a little bit more expensive, but you know, you can choose. There's different rates that you can do, different tiers that you can do, different income brackets that you can do. And um, I sort of found when at different rates, people jump from this to this to that. But when you make the same price, I want people to make a decision based on what they want and not so much can I afford it or not. So I just make everything the same price, but you can change it. All right. Um, 
I would say if you're in a position where you can make more for less, then a lot of times people, you know, they, they, they might sort of buy your things more, okay? Um, but that is your decision. You can also choose to not participate, I think. I do speak under correction there. But I do believe you can choose to not have the whole monthly thing. But then, you know, people are just going to go skip over you, all right? Um, so curriculum... So you upload your lessons. Oh yeah, this is what I want to show you. So once your lesson is uploaded and it shows that it has gone through, you can go over here. You can decide if you want to make it a preview or not, which is then where people get to see them for free in the beginning. Look at me, I still had short there. there. Um, and you can also make your lessons downloadable. So in other words, people can download the lesson. Um, and here's my whole write-up that I did over here. People probably not going to read that, but for those who are interested, they can read that. And also, um, it helps with being becoming more discovered online. All right? Um, so with downloadable lessons, something that I will maybe make downloadable is, let's say I've got a meditation that I want somebody to follow every day, but I don't necessarily want them to stream it. I don't want them to be interrupted by messages coming through and stuff like that. I will make it downloadable, but also remember, you um, sorry, Udemy works like a like an algorithm, like YouTube. The more traffic you have, the more people that come to your page, the more people that watch your stuff, the more people that complete your stuff, the better for you. All right? Um, but anyway, so you get that, and you can preview your lesson. <coughs> Sorry. When you preview it as an instructor and a student, it's pretty much the same. It's very much the same thing. But I would normally do it as a student. I'm just going to put down the volume over here. Uh, oh yeah, when, when you first sign up, you can like schedule how you want to learn. This is for people. So they give you a lot of resources to your students to also remind them that they want to be busy with stuff. Um, yeah, I still had very short hair um, with my plants at the back. But so this is basically what the student sees. Okay. Um, and you want to be very mindful of what they see. Another mistake that you don't want to make is that you don't want to think that your offer is so amazing that you don't have to make an effort with the background. Because I was just myself here, crazy, weird, making a noise, whatever. Um, and, and, and people sort of really, really like that. You know, the Uber Eats is trying to sell me some food that I'm probably going to fall for. But you can see here the first couple of lessons. I just started to take this course myself. Um... And even if you stop in the middle of a lesson and you go to someone new, it's going to start off there as well. But this is everything the student gets. They get all sort of like the lessons and all the different things over here. They can decide where they want to go. Has there been any announcements, any learning tools? Those are all the things that you upload. You can make it full screen, for example, um, or they can make it full screen, for example. Um, I don't think on an iPad this goes bigger. But that doesn't really matter. Everything is there. But as you can see, the lesson is four minutes and two seconds. Okay. Um, also, with me doing this on the iPhone, if you go through this course, you'll see sometimes my eyes go a little bit off focus. Because, you know, obviously, same as with the iPad, the cameras are on the side. So if you have something on top, you always want to you always want to think how is the person seeing you? Are you making a personal connection with you? You know, you can change your uh, your back a little bit if you want to, that sort of thing. I think one thing is if you're going to do a longer course, unless you're going to maybe wear all black or all white or something like that, don't wear the same outfit all the time. <laughs> you know, make it make it enjoyable for your students. Let them have fun with it, you know. And always look at that camera into it if you like a side thing that you are using, some other tablet or whatever. I know that Samsung has a nice one in the middle. Um, so maybe do a little bit of test videos in that sense. Also something that works really, really well that a friend of mine who works in radio, and I never thought that I'll work in radio, but apparently these days I am, um, here and there giving a bit of psychic advice and stuff like that. It's maybe putting a photograph or an, an image or something of someone you really trust and you speak to that. So if you've got a, little, a lot of difficulty sort of speaking to a dead screen or something like that, or just looking yourself in the eyes, then maybe where the camera is, where you want to focus, speak to a person that you really care about that's really important to you. That actually helps quite a lot as well. Okay, so I'm going to stop this here. And if you obviously have any questions, you know, you're more than welcome to, to ask them. Maybe at some point I'll make a more formal sort of course of this. I just wanted to create something to help you a little bit. Um, you know, what, how you can go about. The thing with Udemy, it's, it's a lot in the beginning. It's a lot in the beginning, but remember there is the 
um, there is the um, what is it called now the the community that you can join you know you can join one of you can join my page if you want it's called Adrian Nelson I've got another one that is spiritual support for esoteric practitioners where you can really just come and be a person and with spiritual practitioners, I say that people that are interested in self-development, having a big experience of life, whether you become a complete spiritualist or whether you open a bakery or, you know, a, a mechanic service or whatever. But that's what I got for you. I hope that that helps. Um, and let me know in the comments. And then, you know, we'll take it from there. From my heart, namaste, best of luck. And go and create some awesome material out there.